Today, we're going to take a look at loving yourself through breaking barriers and making peace with barriers that are here to stay. This is the Couch to Active Podcast. I'm Lynn Lindbergh, and this is episode number 534, which we're going to go back and do a replay way back in our archives to episode number 16, Loving Yourself by Breaking Barriers. Enjoy. If I continue to be angry and angry and angry and frustrated and mad about something I have no control and no influence over, I am doomed to hurt my mental health, to hurt my spirit, to hurt my happiness in life, I must make peace with the things that are here to stay. Finally, get back to a life with exercise. And this is your first step. We're going to start getting you moving. I'm Lynn Lindbergh, your bad couch guru. Well, hello there, my friends. How are you doing today? I'm wondering, since it seems like everybody in the world that I know right now has been sick or had the flu, (laughs) how are you feeling? Did you get the flu? Are you getting better like me and uh, my whole house here? I was at my doctor's office a few months ago and they asked me, oh, would you like to get a flu shot? And I said, well, yes, I would like to get my flu shot. And we started talking about a whole bunch of other different things. And I left the office and realized a few months ago that we forgot to get the flu shot. So here I am months later, just recovering from days and days in bed, feeling absolutely miserable. Um, (laughs) But I'm I'm through it. I'm back up at my desk and uh, here with you today. I have a question for you. Do you ever feel like you're just stuck on something. There, there's something in your life that you want to make an improvement on and you're just stuck. And it's not that you intend to stay stuck or that you intend to stay where you are for the rest of your life, but you've just kind of been there because you don't see a clear and obvious answer or a way to break through. I know all of us face that now and then. And, and if you think you haven't, It's probably because you just haven't slowed down long enough (laughs) to really see that maybe there are some areas in your life that you're stuck on. Today, we're going to take a look at that. Uh, Specifically, the content from this comes from the Breaking Barriers section of my Couch to Active book, but I'm not going to read the book to you. We're going to talk about it in a little uh, different context and detail here to help you look at something going on in your life right now, today, and make a breakthrough. This podcast very likely will be a life changer for you. And I don't say that lightly, and I'm not saying that as a rah-rah, pump it up. It really could be a life changer for you. And the beautiful thing about the content in this is, even though we're looking at breaking barriers at its core, it becomes a way of loving yourself and just having so much more self-dignity, self-advocacy skills in a way that becomes very crystal clear and black and white where you can look at your situation and see it more clearly than you've ever been able to see it uh, before. The reason I jump ahead in the book and bring up this episode today is because I am coming off of an incredible high A couple weeks ago, a dear friend of mine, we piloted a weekend retreat. We are playing around with the idea of offering weekend retreats for um, health, wellness, and healing. And I hosted this lesson during the retreat with the group of people that came to it, and it was amazing. It was powerful. And it it really, in a span of less than an hour, you could see it was immediately changing lives and people's eyes were open to how empowered we really are and how much the answers to what we're struggling with so much of the time is already right within us. And it's there. And, and it's not 
that we are resistant to the answers or we are too dumb to see them. Um, That's not even a right way to say it, right? It's more just life gets busy and we need somebody to pause with us and help us look in the direction that we need to look so we can see the answers. That is what we're doing today. At the end of this podcast, you will make a breakthrough with one thing that you are working with or facing with right now today. And it doesn't have to be exercise, even though, of course, you know, I always like it to be. Um, <laughs> so before we jump right into that, I do want to give a shout out and a thank you, thank you to my newest iTunes five star review that came in. It was short and sweet, but I still really, really appreciate it. And that is from and this podcast review came in uh, from Word of Mutt. So thank you very much, Word of Mutt. And I will actually um, call him out. His name is Tim Self, and he runs the BI Standard podcast on Bainbridge Island here. And he just writes, easy to listen to. Well done, Lynn. Thank you for this podcast. So Tim, thank you for that review so much. <laughs> Appreciate it. If you are listening on iTunes, go in right now. Leave me a review And just take a moment to write a sentence or two about something that you have learned, and I will call it out on a future podcast. Another thing we did at this weekend is we all wrote notes to each other, or we call them love notes to each other, really short, just a sentence or two. And at the end of the weekend, we got to uh, take home the notes that everyone else had written about us. And it's really a wonderful thing because as adults, we really don't pause to thank our friends and thank the people around us. And it's so easy to forget all the great things and wonderful things about us. And so I am going to take just a minute here to read just a few of the notes that came in to me after doing this Breaking Barriers exercise at this retreat last week. One was, Lynn, I admire your inspiration you give to others. Next one, you have a loving soul wrapped in spunk with an ability to learn to the reality of the moment. True coach. I love your kindness. Your compassion for others is inspiring. Thank you for the weekend. You have a gift of asking great questions and providing insight. Keep going. Please keep doing this. I can't thank you enough. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You have a gift. Thank you. If you're listening to this and you were there that weekend, you know it was an amazing, incredible, special time. And I know this podcast won't even come close to the experience of doing this exercise in real life. But I do hope that it will help some of you who are listening today with something that you are working through. At the end of this lesson, I'm going to pause and ask you to do one exercise with me that'll help tie it all together and really make it stick. And if you do that, five Couch to Active Points for you. And if you don't know what Couch to Active Points are, don't worry. It's no big deal. You'll come along pretty soon. (laughs) Let's take a look at this concept of breaking barriers in our lives. And before we jump in, I want you to take just a moment to pause and think about what is the first thing that comes to mind, the first thing that pops into your brain when you think, I'm stuck, I'm frustrated, I'm not sure what the answer is. Take a moment. What's the first thing that comes to your mind? That is probably the one you want to work on in this exercise today. It could be You're here listening to Couch to Active because you want a more active lifestyle, so you're stuck on trying to figure out how to get exercise in your life. That's an easy one. Go ahead and use that if you want. Or it could be, I'm just tired all the time. Or it could be, I hate my job. (laughs) Or it could be, my child is driving me crazy. I don't know what to do with them. Or my spouse is driving me crazy. Or I'm in this relationship and I do not know what to do. I'm stuck. Any of those, perfectly valid. So pick your one thing right now. Take a moment to go out of listening mode and into thinking mode and say, what is your one thing 
that you want to work through today in this podcast. You got it? Okay. So that's step one, being able to identify what it is that you want to improve or what it is you want to solve for. That is step one, because so much of the time we just don't mean to, we just get busy and we are just living the routine of our day in a way that's not really intentional because there's just so many darn things you got to do, right? You got to get up, you got to get ready for work, you got to eat, you got to pay bills, you got to drive to work, you got to get groceries. I mean, those things have to happen. (laughs) So pausing to really take a look does feel like a luxury, but it's not. Okay, we've got our one thing we're going to look at. Here's number two. Step number two is to get out a piece of paper or get out your computer and list every single barrier to your problem you can think of. So for example, if my if I want to use the example of I'm struggling to exercise, my list of barriers could look like I'm tired all the time, I'm too busy, I have too many obligations, I'm taking care of an aging parent, I uh, have uh, fibromyalgia, which causes me to be in pain some days, so I never know when I can do what exercise. It's raining outside. It's cold outside. It snowed for a week. The kids were home for a week because of snow days. That kind of a thing. It, think specific, though. Get as specific as you can. Like, I went to the gym on Tuesday and I accidentally brought one tennis shoe, not two tennis shoes. Or <laughs> or I showed up at the gym, but the spin class was full and there wasn't a bike for me. I mean, think detailed, detailed. What are all your barriers? Or if the thing you're struggling with is something, uh, maybe finances, it could be my barriers are... I don't really have a full picture into my finances. I feel like my expenses are out of control. I feel like the job I have today doesn't pay all the expenses that I need in order to just eat and pay rent. And maybe what you picked was a relationship issue. And so some of the barriers to to working through that relationship is your own fears and insecurities and your own questions about the relationship and time to spend with that person and and the fact that you can't control that other person and the fact that maybe you don't know what to say or how to make a breakthrough or all kinds of things. So list each and every barrier that you can and spend a lot of time really working through the list. This is probably something that will take at minimum 15 minutes, but realistically, weeks to really process through what are all the, all the things getting in my way. Then we're going to move on to step three. Now, look at your list of barriers and give every single barrier that you listed a rating of one to four. And we're going to go through what the different ratings mean. What this exercise is going to do is it's going to pull you out of the overwhelm of the list of barriers. It's going to pull you out of feeling like you are a victim and you have no control over anything and and you're stuck. And it's going to very quickly get you crystal clear on what you can and can't control and what you can and can't influence And at the end of this, you are going to most likely, most people who do this, feel incredibly empowered, like there is stuff that they can do to make a difference in their life right now today. So here we go. Step number three, we're going to list a number one through four next to each one of your barriers in your barriers list. Here's how you classify them. Barriers that you list, level one barriers That's every barrier that you can either control is within your own ability to control or is a temporary barrier or both. So look at your list and if there are things that are temporary or things you have total control over, write a number one next to those. Then 
Let's go to the other end of the continuum. We're going to skip two and three for now, and we're going to go to number four. Number four is a barrier that you have no control over at all. You can't influence it. And or it's a permanent barrier right now. And I know, I know there's going to be some gray areas. Maybe you have something that's permanent now, but in three years it won't be permanent. But for now it's permanent. So you're going to try to not get too hung up over, you know, is this a 3.5 or an actual four? You know, <laughs> try, try to give yourself some compassion there and use it just as a tool to know a number four is one you really can't do anything about right now. You really can't truly influence it. The two and the three is where they fall somewhere in between. So a two is something you probably really can control or influence, and it probably is temporary, but there might be some other elements out of your control or some elements that are a little permanent. And a three, you'll assign a number three to items where it probably really is something you can't influence or it probably really is permanent, but there's some gray area in there and it could kind of go one way or another. So there's your continuum. A one is things you have total control over and a or can influence or are temporary. A four is no control, no influence, a permanent. So here's an example of a four. I have a permanent barrier of fibromyalgia that will probably never go away that says on any given day when I wake up, I don't know how I'm going to feel if I'm going to be in a lot of pain or a little bit of pain and how much that'll influence my ability to exercise. That's my reality. That's a number four barrier that's probably never going to go away. It might slip into number three now and then because there are a lot of things I can do with diet and sleep and stress that'll help me influence it. But the fact that I have fibromyalgia is never going to go away. That's a number four barrier. A number one barrier would be something like, I keep forgetting to do my exercise. Well, okay, there's a lot of things you can do to control and influence that. I want to eat healthier, but I make bad food choices. That's obviously a number one barrier because you have complete and total control over it, even though it may not be the easiest thing. All right. So that's step three. We listed our barriers one through four. Now, what you have in front of you is this list of barriers classified one through four. Now you are going to focus on just two numbers. All the barriers you listed as number one, those are the barriers you are going to right now today start conquering. So if you forget to exercise, that's a number one barrier. Start figuring out how to conquer that. If you have a barrier to exercise, that's as simple as I don't feel good in my workout clothes. You can get workout clothes you feel good in. (laughs) That's clearly a number one barrier. Start ticking away all those number ones that you have influence over and it'll pull you right into a place of empowerment and being able to break through this in a way that'll make you smile. Now, the other number I want you to look at is the number four barriers. Those are the ones we don't have control over, we can't influence for the most part. Those are the barriers that you need to look very, very closely at and ask yourself this question. How can I make peace with those barriers that are here to stay? How can I make peace with those barriers that are here to stay? Because I know that if I have something in my life today that I truly cannot influence, I truly do not have control over, it is permanent for now, it is here to stay. If I continue to be angry and angry and angry and frustrated and mad about something I have no control and no influence over, 
I am doomed to hurt my mental health, to hurt my spirit, to hurt my happiness in life. I must make peace with the things that are here to stay. Now, with that said, I want to throw in a caveat here. Take a second look at your number fours on your list and really ask yourself, are they truly a number four impenetrable barrier? Or is there something I can do to influence it so it can become a number three barrier or a number two barrier? Because sometimes we will push things and say, oh, I have no influence. I have no control. I can't do this. And we really can. And we really have more power, but we don't realize it because we've given away our power to God knows what. (laughs) Right? So look at your number fours closely. Make sure they really are number fours for now. And then ask yourself, how can I make peace with that today? And you'll know you're making peace with it when you have this weight lifted off your shoulders that says, you know what? Yeah, that's my reality right now. And yeah, wasting time and energy Fighting my reality rather than solving where I can control and influence is not healthy for me. That feels good and that feels empowering. So, step one, we identify our problem. Step two, we list all the barriers. Step three, we classify them one through four. And step four, we're going to step back and take a look at that whole list of barriers one last time. And realize, in order to be successful, we don't have to solve it all. Not even remotely. In fact, most of the time, when you have something you're really stuck on in your life, in order to solve for it, sometimes it only takes just a few items in your list to make a breakthrough on to actually be successful. You don't have to solve for all those barriers there. You just need to solve for enough to make a breakthrough. And that's really empowering and that's that's exciting. I, you know, I think sometimes for the example of exercise, we tend to think we have to solve our entire life and have a perfect schedule all set up and and have everything just in perfect homeostasis so we can <laughs> have our exercise routine and then we will be happy, right? No, no, that's not it. That's not life. Our lives are way too crazy than that. <laughs> and we have too many things going on. All we need to do is solve one thing at a time. Today, I've got 10,000 things going on. I still am recovering from the flu. And all I need to do is find a little bit of time where I can get some cardio in that works for what my body will do today. Boom, that's success for the day. My office is still a mess. I still need to organize my bedroom. I'm always behind on all kinds of chores around here. I'm always barely getting this podcast out on time. all of those things, but I can still claim success in my exercise by just carving out my one little bit of time for today. All righty. I promised you at the end, we would have one takeaway to give you five couch to active points. So here's what I want you to do. Right now, I'd like you to get a piece of paper out. Go back, rewind this podcast. Rewind. Oh my gosh, that makes me old. (laughs) <laughs> Anybody out there who uh, <laughs> doesn't know what I mean when I say rewind, um, that's really cute. Go to the beginning of the podcast with your paper, listen to the steps, and do this breaking barriers exercise for you. And then send me a note, lynn at couchtactive.com. It's L Y N at couchtactive.com. Let me know how uh, it went. For you and if you made a breakthrough and also let me know if you're okay with me reading your letter on a future podcast sit up tall be bold be brave breaking those barriers love yourself by taking a look at what you need to and break through those barriers all right now have a great rest of your week bye-bye now um, 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 um. 
This podcast was adapted from the Couch to Active book. It is a award-winning book. It won a Best Book Award finalist title, and it's up for some other awards in the near future. We're super, super excited about it. If you do not have your copy of the Couch to Active book yet, now is the time to get it. Head over to couchtoactive.com for your signed copy or anywhere online uh, that books are sold. You can get couchtoactive.com delivered to you through Amazon Prime and it'll be on your doorstep within a couple of days. If creating an active lifestyle, breaking through barriers in your life in a whole new way that makes you smile sounds good to you, don't delay. This will be the best money you've ever spent. This is not a fluff book that just makes you feel good and gives you an idea of things to think about. Uh, uh, uh. I go through and I give you lessons and then I help you see exactly how to apply it to your life so you actually get a book where you really make a real transformation in your life. That's why I wrote it is to truly help transform lives. And with my 20 years in training and degree and background in education and adult learning theory, I smash that all together into this book for you in a way that makes it easy for the human brain to digest and actually make real change in your life. Head on over couchtoactive.com, get the book, sign up for Cactive Club and do some one-on-one coaching with me. It'll be the thing that gets you moving.